One man loved his horse and dog very much and never separated from them. One day, as they were rushing home from a storm, lightning struck a tree and the man and his four-legged friends were instantly taken to heaven without even realizing what had happened. They just continued on their way and were very tired. They were also very thirsty. At last they arrived at a beautiful golden square, in the middle of which was a beautiful fountain with cool crystal water. The travelers approached the guard, and the man asked where they had reached. This is paradise, the guard smiled. You can stay with us if you want. You will have everything here. It is good that we are here, said the owner of the horse and dog, but we have always lived poor. Why do we need everything? Let us just drink from this beautiful fountain. You can drink, the guard replied. The horse and dog can't. But why not? Because they are animals and do not deserve to touch this water. Go and drink it yourself. No, the man replied without hesitation as he looked at his four-legged friends. If they are not allowed, I will not drink either. He thanked the jailer and left. The road led uphill and the travelers were very tired. They could not make a single move when they noticed a settlement behind a crumbling old fence. They were met by an old man. We are thirsty, the man told him. Well, there's a water spring over there. Go and drink, the old man waved. Are we all allowed to drink? Sure you can drink. The man, the horse, and the dog took a long time to quench their thirst and then returned to the old man to thank him. What is this place? the traveler asked the old man. Paradise, the old man answered. It cannot be. The man was astonished. The guard said that paradise is over there, in the golden square where the fountain is. No, no, that is hell. That's weird, the man shook his head. But why do they call it paradise then? We are even grateful to them. After all, they have all those who are able to betray their loved ones. Why do we mention this parable here? It's simple. The traitors are the first to sell themselves, says Plutarch. Don't say goodbye. Don't expect them to change. And let fate set things right. One day it will do it by itself. Having tested you by betrayal, life will give you real happiness and you will realize that the one you don't need has long remained by the fountain, and you yourself will begin to understand people better. Remember what the famous painter Marc Chagall said, When old friends leave me, betray me, I do not despair. When new ones appear, I do not flatter myself. I keep calm. We wish the same for you. Keep calm. And may you always have a spring from which to drink with those who will never betray you. We all deal with pain of betrayal in different ways. But most often we hide inside ourselves as in a shell, and there, alone, first howl like a wounded animal. And then we begin to think, why did it happen? How did I let this happen? Mark Levy, a French novelist, advises to erase everything from memory. Forget promises, spit out poison with a taste of betrayal, and then asks, how many days and nights will it take this time for the wound to heal? This time? What can those words mean? Right, only one thing. You will be betrayed again in this life, and it will always hurt. In the book The Devil Can Cry, Sherilyn Kenyon reflects on this too. When you love someone, really love, friend or lover, you open your heart completely to them. You give them a part of yourself that you've never given to anyone else, and you let them see your essence, and only they can to cut your heart and soul so deeply. And when they make that cut, it's harsh. It hurts you like your heart is being ripped out, and you're left naked and defenseless wondering what made them hurt you so much when you did everything you could to love them. What is wrong with you if no one can fight for you? Does that mean no one ever loved you? One time like that is enough to make it memorable forever. But can it happen again? Let's answer one last question together. Who would ever agree to endure betrayal again? 
Sadly, it will be you and me. Why? Because we can't live our lives any other way. We're used in trusting those we love. That's how we were raised. We've been told since we were kids that it's right to trust people. And we do. And in return, we get what we get. Betrayal is always the flip side of your high expectations. If you don't have excessive expectations of another person, it will never be a betrayal to you. When we are betrayed, we lose faith in people. We lose hope and happiness. We lose someone who is close to us. But we find ourselves, and it's very important. We begin to realize that we ourselves are not capable of betrayal, and it raises us to an unattainable level for others. Why do we need it? Answer this question for yourself.